Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow foxing pro Mark Ripley with 12 hours to put as many foxes on the ground as possible. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. We're out this evening. Um, I've got a mate uh, with me, um, and we're, we, we've basically been, we've been baiting up um, several farms for the last sort of three or four weeks. Uh, we've got quite a few foxes coming in. We've had a trail cam set up, and we've been watching the, the bait points, and they've been getting through probably a carrier bag or so of bait each night. Um, so really, what we're going to do is just go around, have a look, see all the different farms, um, and just start on our sort of uh, annual fox cull. Uh, hopefully sort of clear a fair few up before the um, lambing season. We've pretty much left them alone throughout the spring and that. So um, so yeah, now it's just a case of, of sort of starting to get into them and get the numbers down. On one of the other uh, farms, they're trying to um, sort of reintroduce the grey partridge into into the area and uh, so of course any ground nesting birds and things like that it, it, you need to keep the fox numbers down for that and generally on a lot of the farms in this area it is uh, they are sheep farms so um, yeah the lambing is a priority it's kind of a, a constant sort of battle really with it because uh, well when when they're lambing it just it pulls foxes in from all directions it seems to be a lot of foxes around this year. Um, uh, one of the bait points, we uh, we counted nine foxes when we uh, just walked up and had a look with the lamp. So uh, yeah, we should uh, should be in for quite a good night. I think there'll be a fair few about. On some of these uh, these farms, there's some um, some houses and and we're on the edge of some uh, housing estates and that. Uh, so you do get a few kind of semi-urban foxes drifting in uh, from there. Uh, but then in contrast, we've got other bits of ground which is open hill ground where there's um, there's nothing much around at all. They're just just hill farms. We met up at um, about dusk, and uh, we've got a, a a dead ewe that was um, just out in the field, just died of natural causes. So we pulled that out um, into a into an area where it's safe to shoot, and we set up a high seat. Uh, and sat there and uh, watched over that and I went back down to another area where um, we'd been baiting uh, a couple of fields away and uh, we started off there by just um, just having a look see what was coming in. With his man in the high seat, Mark patrols the other side of his ground on foot, and his looks good. After minutes, he ambushes not one, but two foxes on a field boundary. The selected fox is well within range, we just need it to stop for long enough. I 
I think we managed to, I picked off a couple on, on the uh, on the U and um, I picked a couple more off on the bait side. So it was off, off to a good start on the first farm. After that we um, headed round to, uh, well, several farms. Um, it just became a bit of a... <laughs> an onslaught really of fox after fox and uh, different bits of ground um we went on to a bit of a uh, bit of open hill ground and um that's got a few houses just at the, at the base of the hill and uh we had um i think we had four foxes come up out of the, the backs of the houses there to the to the cooler which using the fox pro cooler with a pheasant distress um track running and we called four out and shot those all quite close range was less than 100 yards for all of those. And then we went on up to um, some more open hill ground, which is a bit more, a bit more uh, desolate. But um, again, managed to call a few in. Uh, a bit further the range is there, the foxes there are a little bit more jumpy. I did manage to score a, a we had about a 250 yard shot with the um, the Browning x bolt as well, which was which was quite a nice one. It made a good combination actually. Was using the Browning x bolt in 243 along with the uh, Drone Pro 15 times um, scope, and the combination of the two worked very well. I think we've got up to about 13 now, so we're doing doing pretty well. Uh, we're going to head on out to um, uh, another bit of ground, which which should hopefully hold quite a few foxes. This is where we've seen uh, the, the nine on one bait point. So hopefully we'll uh, have a, a good, good go there and top the total up a bit more. It's around about three o'clock in the morning. So we've still got a few more hours yet before uh, first light. It gets light about probably about half six actually. So um, and hopefully we might even get another one or two um, once it's light, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm starting to feel like I could do with a Red Bull or something or a coffee just to keep me going. It uh, should be alright for a bit longer. I don't normally get into about four in the morning when I'm out lamping anyway, so an all-nighter shouldn't be too too painful. I've done, I've done one or two before. Yeah, we've had a had a couple of goes before, um, but so far we've um, we've got more than what we normally would in, a, in an all-nighter, so we're doing well. Yeah. With another fox coming in, Mark has a golden opportunity to add to his baker's dozen. A rising bank behind the fox makes for a safe backstop. As it comes into within effective shooting range, Mark is confident. Right, next we're going to head up to uh, another farm, but that again is on the edge of a small town. Uh, again, quite an open bit of ground. Hand smells from the taste of dog fox. <laughs> but uh, we've had a quick sort of look before up there with the lamp and that, and we've seen a few foxes milling around, so hopefully we'll be able to get a couple more up there. Yes, yeah, so we've... Um, We've been up here now for about an hour and we've seen several foxes but we, it's a little bit awkward to shoot because there's a road that runs between two of the, uh, the busy fields but uh, we've managed to draw a couple in again using the Fox Pro and the Pheasant Distress Call, they seem to like that this evening. And these um, thermal images it makes a big difference as well, using one of those just saves so much time scanning around and nothing's mm. got any idea that, that you're around. before you have to sort of scan around with a lamp and look for an eye shine you can you can walk into a field and just quickly pan round and you'll know if there's anything in the field or not because it just stands like a big white blob we've had um we've had a couple up here tonight as well so uh yeah all good i think they were both around about 100 to 120 yards something like that Okay, well, we've been around to the last few farms and that that um, 
we had on our on our hit list for the evening and uh, it's just got light and we've now got a grand total of 20 foxes so unless we bump into any more uh, in daylight then that's going to be the that's going to be the final count yeah very very happy with that it just goes to show the amount of foxes that are on the ground uh, and funny enough we actually the areas where we was expecting to shoot more we actually shot less and shot more on the ones that we didn't expect to see a lot so it's just you never know it just depends on the night and what's out but um it has helped we've been using some decent quality uh, equipment and that we uh, using a uh, pulsar hd38 uh, thermal imager which is brilliant for spotting it just saves so much time uh, and then um, i was using a drone pro on the brown good bits of kit it, it just sort of gives it a good sort of kick start into the uh into the sort of the the, the cull if you like the winter sort of cull before uh before the lambing season that's the main thing we just bumped into the farmer actually this morning um as we uh were tying them all out on the gate for for a final count and uh yeah he was very very pleased to see uh to see all that lot hanging up there but i think from now on we're going to be pretty busy it's going to be sort of a few times a week and weekends and whatever you so yeah it sort of starts here i think i've actually gone past it now <laughs> past being tired i'll probably just grab a coffee and head home and i expect i'll uh it'll probably kick in a bit later and i should be asleep in the armchair or something <laughs> Mark there showing us why he's one of the UK's number one pest controllers. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. MPs have overwhelmingly backed driven grouse shooting. At last Monday's parliamentary debate, most of the politicians present spoke out in favour of grouse shooting, praising the contribution it makes to the economy and employment. The MP for Calder Valley said he felt quite sick at the petition and quickly realised its claims were simply untrue and based more on ideology than on fact. Firearms crime is still low, the latest official figures reveal. Crime involving the use of a firearm rose 7%, in line with the overall rise in crime in the UK, but still less than half of the peak figure nine years ago. Less than a tenth of firearms crimes involved a rifle or a shotgun. Most used guns that are illegal to begin with. The government said the latest figures should be viewed as part of a general downward trend in gun crime. The government's report on flooding is out, and as far as shooting is concerned, no news is good news. Antis had tried to use the report as a means to attack moorland management for grouse shooting, but in fact the report doesn't mention grouse moor management at all. Instead, it recognises the obvious fact that record rainfall was the primary cause of last year's floods. For all your grouse shooting and gamekeeping news, don't miss iShoot magazine. And finally, if you think the mainstream public has it in for shooting, think again. A poll conducted for the Countryside Alliance asked 2,000 members of the public to name the most important issues to them. Not a single one mentioned anything to do with shooting or grouse moors. Then, when asked to rate various issues as either important or not, more than three quarters of people thought the issue of grouse shooting was unimportant. In other words, the public doesn't care either way. The Countryside Alliance's Liam Stokes said it was a sign that debates over banning shooting were in no way reflective of broader public interest. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>